All right. Welcome, everybody. This is our first episode. We're hoping to do this for the next few weeks um, as a lead up to our Play Code Compete event on March 28th. It'll be a Saturday, full day of coding and gaming. And so we thought we would do some uh, weekly videos. We'll do them every Friday at 4.30 um, for the next few weeks at least. Teaching kids or anybody who wants to come in and watch how to make games. Uh, we're gonna be using a program called Scratch. There's lots of different programs that can make games out there. Uh, there's RPG Maker, there's Game Maker, there's Unity, there's all kinds, but we're gonna be using Scratch because that's the one our kids have access to. And also, if you know nothing about coding and nothing about making games, Scratch is kind of a great place to just start from. So um, we're gonna be using that uh, program. It's completely free. You can go to scratch.mit.edu. Um, if your kids are in the Anaheim Elementary School District, they already have an account. We teach coding K through six in our district. Um, if you're not in our district, uh, it's a free program. You can just go to uh, scratch.mit.edu and you can get access to it. So we're going to build a game. Um, we're going to spend probably at least this week and next week making the game. It might take two, might, or it's definitely going to take at least two weeks. It might take three weeks to make. Um, if we make it in two weeks, then on the third and fourth week, we'll do something completely different, a completely different game. So um, we're going to kind of go through the whole process of what it takes to make a game from having an idea to sketching it out to play testing it to um, doing the art for it and all of that. Um, I will say many times as we go through this that I am not that great at art. Uh, not because maybe I don't have the talent, um, but just because I haven't put in the time. And that goes for a lot of things in life that we're not that good at. It's not necessarily that we couldn't be that good at it. It's just what you decide to put time into. And I've not decided to put time into getting better at my artistic skills. So the one thing the game will not have is great graphics. It's also just a limitation of the program too. So um, first thing you gotta do is you gotta have an idea of a type of game. And so there's some people who say you should have an idea of a kind of story you wanna tell or something that you wanna convey. Um, and others think that you need to have kind of the game mechanic first. And some people think you just have both of them kind of at the same time. Find a good story and then find a mechanic that fits it or find a mechanic and then find a good story that fits it. Um, for our case here, we're not going to be telling a story necessarily with the game. It's going to be more about just exploring the mechanics of game making in general. Um, when I teach kids game making, we typically talk about you need to find that sweet spot between something that's not too difficult and something that's not too easy. If it's too easy, um, then people get bored and they just put it off the side. If it's too difficult, people get frustrated and they put it off to the side. Either way, nobody's playing your game. So we talk about how you got to find kind of the middle ground where it's challenging enough um, that you see a reason to keep playing it, but that it's not so challenging that you get um, fed up with it and you put it off to the side. So um, we're gonna spend more time talking about game mechanics and what you need to consider with making a game than actually putting together a story and all that. So again, very basic. Um, if you take a look, I mean, this is the program we're gonna be using, it's Scratch. It starts out with just um, a cat here. So that's just really simple stuff. That's what we're talking about when we talk about um, making games. So um, ideas, you gotta have an idea of a game. And so um, just this morning, I was kind of thinking, I don't know exactly what game we're gonna do, what game we're gonna make. I tend to um, kind of just come up with it off the cuff. Um, so not entirely off the cuff. I did think of something earlier this afternoon, but I did um, not plan entirely for it. So that's kind of nice uh, for the kids that are watching. Um, who might get frustrated that things don't look perfect the first time you do it or that you see somebody else and they do an amazing job with something and you may just not be great at it and you think, oh, I'm just not good. You don't see all the work necessary that goes into it. You don't see the 99 failures it took before they got to you know, attempt 100 and it was perfect. Um, I'm gonna show that to you for the next uh, few weeks. You are gonna see all the failures um, and you're gonna see the successes and then hopefully something that comes out on the other side is something that um, you guys might wanna take and make better. In Scratch you can remix, take someone's game and make it better. Um, or just learn some game mechanics that you maybe didn't know you could do and apply it and put it into a better game. Um, reminder, if you come to our event on May, uh, March 28th, play Code Compete, you're gonna be showing up in the morning to code and you're gonna to have to come up with something right then and there. You're not gonna know what it is you're making. So it's gonna be that day you're gonna come in. So you wanna come in knowing a lot about the different ways to make a game. You don't have to make a game at the event. You can do an animation or an app. Um, I personally, when I teach Scratch, I teach games because that's what I love to do is playing games and thinking about making games and wishing that I had better coding skills and better artistic skills so that I can make better games. 
Um, but that's what I tend to focus on. So an idea, an idea that I had today was probably about a year ago, I went to Chuck E. Cheese with um, my kids and there was, where was Dave and Buster's? It might've been Dave and Buster's. Anyway, there was a game there um, it was like a flat touch screen, almost looked like a gigantic iPad, like a gigantic iPad. And it had um, kind of like a digital maze sort of thing, like a back and forth. And it had a timer up top. And then basically what the, you do is you put your finger on the touchpad, put in your money, wait for the timer to start. Then when the timer starts, you try to drag your finger through the maze. And of course, you're trying to do it as quick as possible. The quicker you do it, the more tickets you get, that sort of a thing, more points you get. But if you touch the edge at all, you lose, you're done. And so I thought that's real interesting. First of all, it was gross because there's all these people eating food and licking their fingers, whatever, and then touching the screen. So a little bit of kind of gross. But I loved that mechanic because it reminded me of a game I used to teach kids way back when I was teaching Scratch to Kids uh, about five or six years ago of an actual maze. That was like one of the very first things I teach kids to do in Scratch is how to make a maze. But it was like using the up, down, left, and right arrows. And it's not that challenging. You just hit the arrow, you know, to go up and left and right. There's not a lot of dexterity, you know, keeping your hands still and just being very careful as you go around. So I thought that's what I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make a maze game because I'm used to that. I know how to make that. And I'm gonna make it so that you have to um, have some dexterity with it. So you're gonna have to use your mouse to move it. Or if you have a touch screen, um, iPad, um, or Chromebook, or Android tablet, or phone, or whatever, um, and it supports Scratch, you can just put your finger on the screen and drag it around. So that's what we're gonna make. We're gonna make a draggable maze. Um, you're gonna have to have some amount of dexterity. It's not gonna use the arrows on the keyboard. It's gonna use the mouse or your finger. And those are the only two ways you're gonna be able to control the game. So um, probably what you're used to, when you think of you're gonna create something, especially if you're kids and you've done this before, you're thinking, ah, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go right into scratch. I'm gonna start dragging things over. Uh, so I know that it's gonna take the green flag, so I'm gonna drag that over and then, oh, I'm gonna have him say this and oh, I want my cat to be purple, so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna change the way he looks. And that's, that's kind of a recipe for a really bad game. And, um, or eventually a good game, but it's gonna take you that much longer to make it. So I know you wanna get in and you wanna make the game right away and you wanna just take this idea that's up here and put it onto the screen. But the problem is what you see up here, it's only complete in flashes. Like for a second, it's like, oh, I see what I want my maze to look like. And then when I go to actually make it over here in Scratch, I'm gonna forget. Um, or my mind's gonna go off somewhere else and it's like, yeah, you could do that, but you could do this and this and this and this. You know, Up here in my brain, I've got millions of ideas. And what I need to do is I need to get those ideas out. So this is not actually the first step and that's not what we're gonna be doing. Step one is have your idea and I've got my idea. I'm gonna make a touch screen maze. Step two is you're actually gonna sketch it out. You're gonna do something really low tech, which is you're gonna draw. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna draw on the pad what we want our game to look like. And so, um, like I said, I've done mazes before in Scratch, so I kind of have an idea of what we need to do. Not done a touchscreen maze, so that's gonna be a little bit different, but I think the sketching out piece first will be fairly easy. So, um, what you wanna do is, I, I basically I wanna have a starting point. So we'll say, maybe we'll start here. And I'm just gonna put a little smiley face because I don't know what my character is gonna look like. I'll figure that out later. Again, like I said, art is not my skill. I've not put time into it, so it's not something that I can be able to just come up with. Um, I will work on it and I will struggle and, and if you're watching this, you'll see it. Um, but for now, smiley face. That's all I need. It's a smiley face, that's where I'm starting. And um, I don't know where it's gonna finish. So we'll get to that in a second. So um, based on the size of what I've drawn, it looks like I probably need about a three box gap as I go through um, on this. So I need about a three box gap to be able to get through and Going to here, I'm gonna go up. Now mazes are a little difficult to draw because you think, oh, I'm gonna draw a corridor and I'm gonna go up here. But in reality, you don't wanna go all the way to the top. You actually only wanna go up and stop as far as you have the width. So if I want to be three boxes wide here, then I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna come over like this because my little smiley face here has to get through the three. So I have to know as I go through to keep it as three, three the whole time, just keep it as three. So I need to make sure that I do that 
and so that um, I have room. And so when I go into Scratch and I do it, I'm not necessarily going to have boxes that I can look at, but it's going to help me visually know, oh, I can only do these four turns before I run out of room. So I'm going to just kind of keep going. I'm going to do kind of a long corridor. And this is the first level. So this is the first time I'm going to have to actually start thinking about game mechanics. Think of any game you've played. Um, one of the most easy games to talk about this is Mario. Think of Mario, and if you've ever played the original Mario and you've played the very first level in Mario, go back and try it again. If you can get access to it, if you have a Nintendo Switch and you have Nintendo Online, you have access to it, um, or there's a million other ways to play Mario. That very first level, they teach you how to do everything. They teach you how to run, they teach you how to jump, they teach you everything, and it's not very challenging. Yeah, there's enemies, um, yeah, there's power-ups, but it's not challenging. Um, you should be able to play. The idea is you can play that level the very first time and not die. Um, I didn't do that as a kid, but the idea was that you don't get frustrated with it and quit and not play the other 49 levels or however many there are. But also that it's not so easy to go, oh, this is boring. So I need to be careful as I'm making this that I don't make it so difficult that people get frustrated, but I don't make it so easy that people go, really, that's it, that's all it has? So I need to make sure that like for here, it's gonna go through, the character's gonna go through here and it's gonna go down this corridor here, and I'm not gonna put anything in their way. Just go down the corridor, get used to what the the, the controls are like. Because remember, again, it's with the mouse or it's with the touch uh, screen with the fingers, so they may not be used to it. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make the next bend, and I'm gonna go over three, and then I'm gonna come up like this, and I'm going to come up like this, and I've made my first bend. And I'm going to actually have it go a little bit further, have it go up a little bit further, and have it bend like that. And then I'm going to, um, okay, so that's enough. By here, you should know how it controls. This should be easy. You should be like, oh, I get it. And if you touch this side and you have to start over, well, you should still get it like, oh, I get it now. I can't touch the sides and go. So now I'm going to make it a little more challenging. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm only going to go up. I'm going to do it like this. And I'm going to make it a dead end. And now it's not like a typical maze where you try it and then you go, oh, that's a dead end. I got to go back. This is going to be more of a like get from the beginning to the end as quickly as possible. So um, I've put that in place here, and you'll notice that I've only made it two wide. And that's because my character can technically fit through two boxes. See here, I can draw like two boxes around them and then have that extra one. That extra one is just to give you room for error. But over here, I'm basically saying, mm, you should be good enough by the time you get to this turn to be able to um, get in that spot. So that's gonna be kind of like a little, not a secret spot, you're gonna see it there, but it's going to be a um, special spot. If you get there, and you're able to make it without touching the edge, I'm gonna give you something. I haven't even thought about how to do points or items or anything. We're just, I need to sketch out my level first. I need to know what it is I'm looking at. Kind of like I'm in a plane and I'm flying and I look down and I can see the grids of you know people's houses and streets and farms and stuff. That's what this is. This is my grid looking down, okay. Then I'm going to, you know what I wanna do? I really like it in games when there's like a little um, breathing area. Now I'm running off the screen here a little bit. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Where there's like a little bit of a breathing area where it's kind of like, okay, you, you suffered a bit to get here, but you made it. And I'm glad you made it to this. It looks like a courtyard. Look, it's like a big square. So I'm gonna make this, but I'm gonna, it's gonna be challenging. There's gonna be something here, but you don't have to worry about touching the edges. That's what I want is I want you to be, Kind of here being like, okay, I gotta, don't touch the edge, don't touch the edge, don't touch the edge, don't touch the edge, don't touch the edge. Oh, I made it, I can breathe. Now I can go here and try to get something that's gonna be relatively easy. And I don't have to worry about touching the edges, but maybe I'll put an enemy in there. Maybe I'll put, maybe, um, maybe I'll put like a little thing in the middle. I haven't thought about it yet. Um, or I can go over here and I can try to get this extra thing and I gotta make sure the extra thing's worth it. It may not be worth it. If it's not worth it, people are gonna ignore it and they're gonna move on and go on to something else and I don't want that. Um, and then we're gonna come over like this and we're gonna go up and we're gonna go up and then I'll have like a door here. It may not be a door, it might be something else. So basically that's it. That's the layout, real simple, real simple stuff, right? 
I've got my three space here, more than enough room for my smiley face. It's not gonna be a smiley face when I make it, I promise you, we'll do a character here later. Um, more than enough room to go through, more than enough room to go through, more than enough room to go through. If I get here and want a little bit of more of a challenge, I can technically make it, but I gotta be so careful to not touch, grab it and go. A little more breathing room over here. Don't have to worry about touching the edge, but I'm gonna put something there to kind of get in your way. And then over here, there's gonna be um, like a goal to get to. Okay. This by itself, boring. Easy, yes. A uh, little bit difficult, maybe, but ultimately boring. So we gotta put some stuff in it. So the first thing I wanna do is I need to identify where I don't want the character to go. Okay, and I'm gonna highlight that in red. So red, red, red. Basically this is like don't go here sort of thing. This is danger for the player, for the character, whatever you wanna call them. This is danger for them. So I'm gonna highlight that. Just so that I know later on like, oh yeah, that's right, I gotta code it so that that's danger. I don't want them to go there. And then in green, I'm gonna put in the things I do want them to get. Well, right now I know I want them to get the door. So that I'm gonna put in green. Eh, it doesn't really show up. Okay, so that's green. <laughs> Now I gotta put in other things because I've established, don't touch the sides or you go back to the beginning. But again, that's boring. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some items for it to collect. So I don't know what they'll look like, I'll just make them stars. I'm gonna put one right here. You gotta make it past the corner. You make it past the corner, you get a star. I'm gonna put one right here. Make it past this corner, you get a star. And I'm gonna put one right here. Right before you get to the end um, and get to have that breather that I talked about, there's gonna be a star. Won't ultimately be a star. I'm gonna draw to make it more of like whatever the theme is. I'm already thinking maybe aliens. We'll figure that out in a second. But the thing that I wanted to pick up, we can pick up there. Um, and then over here is a double star or something. What's better than one star? Two stars. So whatever I'm going to put here is going to be worth more than what you can normally collect because it's more difficult to get through to there. And then I'll probably put one over here in the corner. And I like this because this means you have to backtrack. So that means that the character is gonna come through here. So we'll kind of plan this out. If I'm playing this game, here's what I would do. I would go through here, go through here, pick up that star, go through here, go through here, pick up that star, pick up that star, come over here and think for a second, maybe, maybe not, but definitely I gotta come over here and I'm gonna pick this one up and then I've gotta go in a different direction. And I like that. I like going in a different direction because up until now it's just been up, right, up, now it's right, now go back to the left. So if you think about it, I was saying you're gonna use your mouse or you're gonna use your finger, you're just going like up, right, up, right, but now you gotta go back and you're going, in, and it seems simple, but you're going in a different direction than you're used to, and if you're not used to controlling in that direction, um, it's gonna be a little hard for you. Same with this, you're gonna go all the way to the left. Great, you grabbed all that stuff, but you also gotta make it back, because if you touch that edge, you go back to the beginning. So that's what I'm gonna do, and it looks like it's what? One, two, three, four. It's four points as of now to get out of there. Um, and then this is an extra two points. So at the most you can get is six, but you definitely need four to get to that door. And I'm gonna make it so if you don't have four, you don't get through the door, you gotta go back. And if you have six, you get through the door and something else happens, who knows what. Easy, simple. Um, I don't really make it that much challenging, so I'm going to add some things. So um, I need to add enemies in, things that get in your way. And I'm trying to figure out where. So I could put it here, but I think that's too. I think that's too frustrating. That can be too frustrating. If you're just getting used to it, and you go here, and I put something here, like an X for now. You might be frustrated just figuring out how to control it and you have somebody right here in your way. So I don't think that's fair. I want you to get this first star thing point uh, as easily as possible. So I'm going to, but I want it to be before this one here. I don't want you to get two points without having to try. So I think I'm gonna have, I think I'm gonna have an enemy here and I think they're gonna go back and forth across the way. I think I'm just gonna have them go back and forth, back and forth. And I'm gonna have it be a, a repetitive time base so that you know, you know, he's gonna, it's gonna take the enemy three seconds to get here, it's gonna wait for two seconds, then it's gonna be three seconds, then it's gonna wait for two seconds. Um, slow. Small, 
and slow. Again, remember, not too challenging in the beginning. Let your players understand how your game works. When you sit down at a game, you have no idea how it works when you first start it. You have to spend time learning how to play it. Um, and the worst thing you can do is be so challenging, like, oh, the very first level so brutal, you're never going to pass it. Okay, then why would I try? Um, but also don't make it so easy where you go, oh, this game's too easy. I'm not even going to try it. This is, I got other things to do. It's boring. Remember, games games are meant to be fun. They are meant to be challenging, um, but ultimately they're meant to be fun. And so if it's not fun, I've got a million other fun things I can go do. Toys I can play with, other games I can play with, shows, movies, everything, music, all all kinds of stuff. I'm competing for time here. So I want to make this a little bit difficult so that you don't feel like it's boring, but not too difficult. Um, okay, over here in my, I'm going to call it the courtyard for now because I don't know what else to call it. In the courtyard, I'm going to, I'm going to have an enemy like this, and instead of having to go back and forth, I oh, okay. I'm gonna have it do, I don't even know how to do this in Scratch, but I'm gonna have it do a circle around. So it goes around and around, and I'm gonna have it be so that it comes just close enough here that if you weren't paying attention, um, you would touch it. And notice that the green line that I drew through before to say, hey, here's how you get it, that doesn't work anymore. So now you're going to have to plot. And I'm going to make it a blue because you're going to have to think. And I'm going to have to come around like this and try to get it. Or I'm going to have to come around like this. If I go this way, then I can do a full loop and go out, and that might be easy. But if I go this way, then I'm going to go back. So I like that. Um, full disclosure, I have no idea how to do this in Scratch, how to do the circle thing. So we'll figure that out together. Um, no, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. We'll figure it out when we get there. Maybe that'll be the last thing I do so that if it doesn't work, I'm not spending forever trying to figure it out. So we'll make that the last thing. Um, and then I don't want one here that's too close. That might be it. Slow one here, just so you understand how the enemies work. Super easy. A circle one here, so um, I like the circle idea also, so then you know it's not always just a boring up and down or left and right, that they can go in different ways. And if I make a second level or a third one, I might have them do like zigzags, or I might have them do like it goes down, then right, then left, then up, then down, then right, then left, then up, um, sort of thing. So I like this. This tells the player you don't know it's not always going to be like this it's not predictable enemies can move in different ways so i like this um i want one here and i don't want to duplicate this i don't want to do this again that's boring um ba -ba 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 -ba. Ooh. okay so i'm gonna put one here and i might make this one appear and disappear appear and disappear again to teach the player these enemies can move in different ways don't get just used to back and forth um so i'm going to put a um, um in, in scratch it's called show and hide so i'm going to put a show hide like that and i just know that this one is a show and a hide and i'm going to put a reminder to myself later question mark I don't know if I'm gonna do that one I where I said I don't know how to do this I know how to do this I just don't know if it's a cool mechanic I don't know if like if it's a cool thing like it shows in a hide so I wait here and then it disappears and then I go and I wait for it to come back if it unless it's like quick there's not that much skill to it and if it's too quick then it's not fair to the player so as I'm like talking right now and I'm drawing it, I'm already talking myself out of it. So I don't think I'm going to do that one. Um, but I'll leave it there. And ideas that sound ridiculous or dumb now to me where I'm like, oh, I can't even believe I thought of that. What? There's no way I'm doing that. Who knows? I might do it later. I might say, oh, actually, this is, this is fun. I'm going to try this out. Um, or I'll use it at a different level. And of course, I can always put it in there, and if it doesn't work, just take it away. There's no need to have to, you know, make up my mind right away. It's not like whatever I do in the game, I'm stuck with. So, um, I'm gonna leave it there. But already, I'm already talking myself out of that. And um, I don't know. I probably not even gonna get to that until next week. I can almost guarantee I won't get to that until next week. So maybe I'll spend a week thinking about it. Um, and that's what I do a lot of is I'll have an idea and sometimes I want to sit right on my computer and work on it. But then 
in reality, what I should do is spend a week thinking about it because I don't necessarily want to waste the time putting something together that's not going to work out. But I don't want to ignore it either. Um, so you want to, if you've got a good idea, you want to kind of spend time on it, but you want to think about it. You don't want to necessarily start it, hit a roadblock and go, oh, I knew it was a dumb idea and then walk away. That could be, that's like the worst thing that can happen to a good idea. You want to spend time thinking about it um, so that you're less frustrated when you do it. So I'm going to leave it in there. Um, I'm acknowledging that I don't think it's a good idea. I don't like the mechanic. I don't like the idea. I'm already thinking visually. I just don't like the way it's going to look. It's going to be more of knowing what I know how to do in Scratch. It's probably going to be more of like a blink. Whereas in my mind, I'm picturing it as like a slow fade out and a slow fade in. Don't quite know how to do that. Might be able to make different costumes, like a solid, semi-transparent, somewhat transparent, invisible, and then just switch through those. Um, but already I don't think that'll work because, yeah, I don't know. So I'll figure it out as we go through. And again, I might just bail on it. Um, so it kind of gives you an idea of I kind of know where I'm going, but I don't really, and we'll figure it out as we go along. So I think I've got a pretty solid maze here. I've got my uh, little smiley face there. It's going to go through. It's got some choice. Uh, it's got some options. Starts out pretty easy, pretty simple. A little layer of difficulty, bigger layer of difficulty, optional, but more layer of difficulty, and then um, the end. So I'm going to jump over now to scratch, and I'm going to leave this to where I can reference it so I know how to draw it later. So I'm going to jump over now, and I'm actually going to start building it. So while I'm working on this, I'm going to put um, I'll put that away and put this up. We'll pull this over here so that I have it there full screen to kind of look at. So while I'm building the maze, I want to be able to see it easier. So I've got that that way. So, OK, here we go. Um, first thing, Scratch always wants you to make a game with this cat. And I love this cat. It's a it's a, a mascot and you can see I love it, but I'm going to, um, it doesn't fit my theme. And I already kind of talked about how I was, come on, here we go. Kind of thinking about maybe my theme is gonna be aliens. As a kid, I loved aliens. I loved uh, X-Files, I loved Roswell, I loved um, Independence Day, all that. Like I loved aliens. So I'm feeling a little bit nostalgic from when I was a kid, so I think I'm gonna do that. So the first thing I do is I just click on the sprite, hit the trash can, gone. Um, ooh, that took a while to do. So I've got now nothing in my game. So sprites are my characters, basically, for the most part. Um, they can be other things, but for the most part, sprites think of those characters. And then on my backdrop, and my backdrop is like my, um, my backdrop, it's my background. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw my maze as a sprite. And the reason for that is um, I'm going to make it so that if my character is ever touching that line, it goes back to the beginning. And the easiest way to do that is um, through a coding called sensing, where if your character is touching this sprite, do something. So I need to make it as a sprite. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna grab my line. Um, okay. Alien, alien. Um, I think I might do, oh, okay. Um, I'm gonna do an alien crash. So alien crashed, has to make it through the maze. Needs to get to the end. What could the enemies be? The enemies could be other aliens, could be humans, um, could be birds. I don't care too much for birds, so it could be birds. Um, what would an alien be scared of? I'll think about that later. Um, and then the pickup, the green. What would the green stuff be? Uh, oh, I know, okay. Um, so the alien crashes. So we'll say this is like, crash here everybody knows alien aircraft spacecraft not a saucer the triangle shape everybody knows that so we'll do like a triangle kind of shape that's a square that's not a triangle uh, we'll fix that when we make it um, so the alien is crashed here we'll have we'll animate some steam coming off of it or something like that we'll have some blinking lights like that kind of thing um, and then okay here we go they're not gonna be stars I told you it wasn't gonna be stars they're going to be like pieces from the aircraft. I don't know what is 
mechanical stuff look like, like this. This isn't perfect, it's not great, I'm just sketching it out. So these will be like pieces that the alien will pick up as it goes through. Triangle like that. I don't know, we'll figure that out later. Okay, so um, if that's the case, I'm gonna do kind of like a desert theme. And the reason I need to figure this out before I could start coding it there is because as I start drawing out my maze, once I choose what the lines are gonna be, I'm gonna copy that over, make it my background, and then decorate my background. Um, and so I've gotta get it fairly settled before I start. There's a lot of things you can change as you go on. This is not likely gonna be one of them. Once I make the background and I make the coding, it's gonna kind of have to stay the way it is. So, um, okay, I like this. So anyway, that means if it's a desert, then it's going to have to be browns. Um, so line, outline, I do not like the new way to choose colors in Scratch. Um, it's frustrating because you have to drag these bars and you kind of have to go until you get to what you want. I like that, that's brown. Let's start with 10, I'm just gonna do that. Mm -hmm. That looks pretty good. Okay, now, start making this maze as best as I can. First thing I know is that if I hold down the shift button, um, the lines will just go straight up and down, which is what I want as of now. And I'm gonna guess that that's about three. And then I'm gonna come over. I already see I messed up. <laughs> um, let's get this one here. We're gonna make it a little bit shorter. There we go. Okay. And then to come over like this. How far over? I didn't want to go over too far that first one, did I? So I'm gonna come over. That's pretty good. Come up like this. Come up like this. And I'm gonna make that difficult smaller one, right? Like that. bigger gap here on my drawing. That gap is much bigger, which means I'm gonna have a bigger gap up here. That's okay. You know what, actually that's better because I can put my score and my timer up there. So that way, because like as a player, you're used to looking at the top for that kind of stuff, I think. Maybe not down here. And especially because if I want to put my ship down here. Okay, that works out. I like that. I was a little nervous at first, so that I made a mistake. My favorite thing of computers is the undo button. Up a little too high, making that courtyard, whatever I want to call it. Um, and I gotta get it as close as possible. Perfect. And then come up and off the screen, and then come up and off the screen, and let's check it out. Go up, over, up courtyard smaller out oh I know um it needs to be fair so I got to make sure that this looks wider than this and it, these are the same width I got to bring this down so I'm going to take this oh. because they give me a circle eraser but a square line and that's really frustrating to me. Can I change the shape of my eraser? No. Right? No. Alright. Um, come on. Race. Hmm. It might have been too much but I can fix that. It's just mostly this that I need to get rid of, right? It's more if I do that. And now I need to come down a little bit more. And then come in here. Come down. Now that might be better. Mm, I don't think it's still right. But 
you know what? I'm gonna call it. It's good. It's close enough, and I'll I'll adjust my alien figure so that it fits in there. But I need to get rid of that. That's gonna bug me. Come on, go away. Go away. There we go. Perfect. All right. Looks pretty good. Uh, does not look good over here. I need to fix that. So let's go back over here. It's easier for me. It's less distracting. And I'm gonna pull it around so that it takes up all the space. Nice, I like it. Okay, so what I've done is I've created a maze, like a frame. It's not special, it's not fancy, it's just a frame. And then I'm going to put my um, character in here and the character is gonna move all around. Now, I'm gonna set it so that the character is ever touching any part of this sprite, this whole sprite here. If I can rename it to all caps, maze. Do not touch. That's a reminder to me. Character should not touch it. Um, I'm gonna set it up uh, so that it doesn't touch it. But if I start decorating it, like putting stones on the pathway, putting trees or whatever, um, as the alien is walking and it touches the stone, which it should be allowed to do because it's part of the decoration, um, it's going to treat it as part of the sprite. It's going to say, no, 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 it wasn't just the line that you almost touched. You touched the stone and you're not allowed to do that. So I have two choices. Uh, leave this as it is, boring, um, but technically fair, or make a copy of it, decorate the copy, and have that one kind of fill in the space and just leave this as a frame. So. I'm going to do that choice and I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab my thing here and I'm going to grab that and I'm going to grab all of that. Oops, and that one down there tried to hide. So I've selected the entire maze and I'm going to do control C copy. I just like to go over there and I'm going to come down to my backdrop and I'm going to click to paint and I'm going to paste, paste. Why is it not pasting? Paste. Okay. Let's figure out what's going on here. Um. Grab it. Grab that. Grab that. Copy. Go back to my backdrop. Paste. There we go. Uh, now, there you can see it. It's not entirely right, so we need to move that. So, um, oh, it says I have two backdrops. First of all, I don't want two backdrops. So I'm gonna get rid of this one. That's gonna confuse me. And then I'm going to, I'm gonna drag my sprite so that it's kind of in line with the backdrop. It looks like it's about right. I'm gonna change the X coordinate to zero and see if that fixes it. Yes, perfect. So now I basically have two mazes on top of each other. One that I don't want my character to, um, touch and the one underneath it that yeah the character can touch that all day every day doesn't matter and that's going to be the one that i'm going to decorate that's my backdrop and the player is not even going to notice that there's one on top of it that's the same exact shape that it shouldn't touch hopefully hopefully that should work so um i'm gonna decorate that later and then i'm gonna focus on that now now i'm gonna focus on my character so i'm gonna come in here uh, choose sprite now scratch makes sprites um, I could go somewhere else like into Illustrator or Microsoft paint or somewhere and paint my own I'm trying to do everything inside scratch to make it as easy as possible So I'm gonna paint it here in scratch full disclosure two things one Said it at the beginning not a great artist because I just haven't put the time into it And so um, as a teacher, I would always try not to tell the kids I'm not good at art because I don't want them to get discouraged and be like, well I'm not good at art either. So I'm not gonna try what I eventually realized was no It's okay to admit you're not good at something Just admit though that you're not good at it because you haven't put the time into getting better at it um, So I played the trumpet in school and I wasn't good in fifth grade at the trumpet And I was a little bit better in sixth grade and by the end I was pretty good not the best but pretty good. I could have been better if I practiced more. So same with art. Drawings I'm about to do are not going to be great. Not because I could maybe not be better at art later on, but just because I haven't put the time into it. So I'm going to do the best I can. Um, so anyway, that's caveat one. Um, the other thing I was going to say, I can't remember. So we're just going to go in and we're going to start painting. 
So um, there's my backdrop. I know what I need to do, and I'll, I'll make that a little bit better later. Uh, alien. Okay. Um, aliens, I know. So there's lots of different types of aliens. The ones I like remember as a kid a lot were like gray aliens. And so they kind of looked like this. Um, and they had kind of like big eyes like this. And that was usually kind of filled in um, like that. Um, no, let's see, it's not the best. And then um, usually had like a mouth like that maybe. Yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, one of my favorite shows as a kid was Simpsons. And there was an episode where uh, the town thinks that they're being invaded by an alien, whatever. It turns out to be Mr. Burns. But I always love that design of alien because it's very, like, flowy and rope-like. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to make my alien kind of, like, with a big head and a smaller body. But it's going to have a flowy robe like this. Um, and just little feet sticking out like that. Very simple feet. Um, and... No hands. I kind of like the idea. First of all, I can't draw hands. So that's the main thing is I don't know how to draw hands. Um, but I kind of like the idea of it not having hands. Maybe I'll do the same thing I did for feet here. Maybe I'll do like little little hand nubs coming out maybe. Something like that. I don't know. But what I know I'm going to do is I'm going to animate it so that as it's moving, its robe flows up and down like that. So got my alien head and all that. That looks pretty good. It's okay to admire your own work every now and then. Look back and say, oh, yeah, I'm pretty good. That, I'm going to say, is pretty good. So there is my alien head. And I'm going to... Just got one thing I need to fix here. Oh, I know why. Okay, now we're going to go back and we're going to start programming it in. So, I'm gonna drop the audio a bit here on the video. Okay, so now we're gonna draw it. Um, I'm gonna turn that around for reference. So I got an idea. It's pretty good, I'm okay with that. All right, here we go. Now, I know myself, and I'm gonna show you right now. Uh, I want them to be kind of like a, you know, I don't wanna do dark. No, I do actually. Kind of a dark gray, not too purple, but kind of gray. I like that, okay. Now I'm gonna show you, um, I'm gonna show you the way that it doesn't work. So here we go. Okay, so I, I was able to draw it here, just decently okay, passive. Drawing with this thing though, mm -mm. So here's what it looks like if I tried to just do freehand drawing it. And, well, actually, that's not too bad. Um, but let's come through here, down. A little triangle that I like. Up. Yeah, I mean it's kind of like lopsided on the side, so I don't like that. So no. So one thing I like doing with computers. This is one of the things I love about technology. Is um, this thing is advanced. This thing is incredible. It's very fast. It's got a lot of memory. It's got a fast processor. Um, but I'm in control, and I know up here what I want to look like. I just drew it up there. Um, looks pretty good there and I don't know how to take it from me drawing it with a pen to the computer the way I just tried to do it I didn't like it it didn't come out the way I wanted so one of the things I love about doing with computers is forcing it to do something forcing it to say uh-uh I got the idea up here you're gonna do it so I gotta start getting creative though about how I'm gonna do it and I know exactly how I'm gonna do it this basically here this alien head here is basically a big circle and a small circle with lines. I mean, that's it. Super easy. All you gotta do is just fill it in. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna draw the circle and I'm going to say no outline. I want it to be solid. Okay. And I'm gonna hold down the shift key again so I get a, 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 a perfect circle, not like a weird oblong one that I might draw. So hold down shift and I'm gonna draw. That's the top of the head. Mm, we'll pull that down a little bit. That looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna draw what will ultimately be the chin and I want them to be center so it's hard to see but there's a little center icon there come on come on there we go I'm gonna make it center I'm gonna grab this I'm gonna make it center there we go now I'm gonna get my line and bummer defaulted back to normal and I could drag all day trying to figure it out but I don't need to I can just grab this little eyedropper 
hover over here. Yep, make it purple. And I'm remembering back to my maze. Oh, that looks awful. <laughs> It'll look okay in a little bit. Um, ooh, not one. Oh, let me set back to black. Uh, 10 seems to be a good pencil size. All right. I think we're good. Let's try this. I'm not going to hold down the shift key this time because I don't want it to be straight up and down. I want it to be at a curve. And so I'm going to come down here like that. And oh, I don't like that. It's sticking out. Let's see if I can move it. Nope. Undo. 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 Uh, grab the pens. There we go. Can I move it? That's going to change the size. Actually, that's good. That's perfect. See how that's like flawless. Perfect. And not great right there, but I'm going to see if I can maybe rotate it out a bit. It's like a speck, but you know what? I'm going to be shrinking that down anyway. Just don't tell anybody. You'll never notice it. Cool. All right. Now, I could try to do this all over again over here, but I'm not. I'm not that good to be able to replicate it. So I'm going to click on this one. And I'm gonna copy and paste it. And then I know that if these are exactly in the middle of each other, this one should be able to do the same thing. And all I have to do is just flip it like that, drag it over, and it's just a matter now of lining it up right. So that is not lined up right at all. So I'm gonna grab this and drag it out. That's too far. Here we go, come down here. Ooh, all right. I can work with that. I'm not sure why that happened, but I can work with that. Okay, that's good. Not in love with that. Not in love with that. All right, I got a problem here. What's going on? Put that out. Hmm. All right, let's zoom out. What does it look like? It's not too bad. All right, this is where I have to decide how much of a perfectionist I want to be. Do I want to... Do I want to say, hey, when I shrink it down, you're never going to notice it? Or do I want to like make it spot on perfect? So I'm going to I'm going to be a bit of a perfectionist right now. And hopefully maybe as the game goes on and I, I do more, I'm, I'm, I won't care as much. But I, for right now, I do care. This is going to bug me. Mostly because I'm like, no, I did this perfectly. Find this out. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, maybe if I just rotate a bit in. Yeah, no, see, that's that doesn't. It's gonna make him look like he's got a chin, kind of going. I don't know. Maybe that's good, like a hey kind of chin, but I don't want that. And then it popped it back out here again. Okay, I think I got it now. No, that's not it. That is not it. That is not it. I'm gonna come in a bit. Cool. Like it. And I'm gonna go with this. And I'm gonna go with this because it's gonna give my alien some depth. I didn't plan this, I'm not thrilled with it, but I think I know what I can do now, which is when I put in his eyes, I'm gonna give his eyes a little bit of depth. So it's kind of barely, worst case scenario, you're gonna just be like, oh, it looks like he's looking off to the side. Best case scenario, it's shrunken down so much you don't even notice it. Um, I haven't even started coding yet, and that's where I'm gonna know I'm gonna get stuck. And I said at the beginning, I'm not a great artist, so I'm gonna say win, love it, success, and I'm going to um, go with this. So that is an absolute success. I drew my alien, it was better than I could have ever hoped it to be, um, and I'm going to move on. So, success. And. I'm going to now painting in this program is frustrating so I'm just going to I drop her it again you can't do for some reason you can't do a fill here I could if I convert it to a bitmap if I convert it to a bitmap then all those individual pieces become one piece and I lose the ability later on to move things so like let's say later on I'm not in as great of a mood and I'm like oh man I really messed that chin up I gotta fix that uh, the minute I convert it to a bitmap that all goes away and I'm stuck with it but it lets me fill this in 
So instead, I'm going to say, no, I'm going to keep it as a vector image, which means I can keep in editing and, and making bigger and smaller all the individual pieces, and it doesn't look all weird and fuzzy and distorted. Um, but I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to color it all in. And so this is the boring part where you just color everything in, but it's going to pull it all together. And so instead of it being two circles and two lines, be real careful on the edges, it's going to be an alien head because as I drew over here, alien head basically is a big circle on top, small circle on the bottom, joined together by lines, and then as long as you fill it all in, nobody will ever know. I colored outside the lines. I'm only supposed to go for another 10 minutes, but I feel like I haven't made much progress. That's okay. Spend time planning. It takes a lot of time to plan. Again, eager to sit down and do something and, and get it done. I like that alien head. I like it. And I can already see how I'm going to do the robe and everything. This is cool. I'm happy with this. Um, if you plan well, if you spend a lot of time planning, then the other parts go quicker and when something goes wrong you have less that you have to figure out so when this game goes wrong i'm i'm gonna be able to go right back to here and it's not gonna matter so it's really nice to take the time to just pause think plan and really figure it out and things go slow in the beginning but then as you get going it's gonna pick up so it's really going to pick up after I get this alien drawn because then I can actually start coding and making sure it moves correctly. I haven't done any of the decorating in the background or anything, but I want to get this alien finished before we're done to, um, today. So I'm going to get the alien. Now I'm going to do the eyes. Uh, so I want the eyes. I was thinking white with a black outline, but that's going to look weird. It's going to make it look um, like see-through. The, the background's not gonna always be white here. It's gonna be like a, um, I'm gonna do like a cool gradient brown sort of thing, like a, a desert sort of vibe. But it's just gonna look weird. So I'm gonna do, I like a light gray. And I'm gonna make the outline. I think I'm gonna make the outline black like solid black let's see how that looks i'm just going to do a test drawing Ugh. Mm -mm. i'm gonna do it without an outline let's see what that looks like okay i like that a little a little ominous looking like it's floating oh um no you can't do that Every now and then it pops up where you can do like a cool shader sort of thing. I bet it's in the paint. Yeah, there it is. It's in the paint. So you can't do it in the circle. No shaders. All right. Okay. Well, I'm going to draw my eye like that. And I'm going to rotate it like that. How's that look? I like it. Again, don't be afraid to like what you do. Don't be afraid to like your drawing. Don't wait for somebody else to tell you it's cool. Whoops. Don't wait for somebody else to tell you it looks good. You can look at something, stand back, and be like, man, that looks good. I am I did a good job on that. That's totally fine. Man, I want to walk around telling everybody that. Like, hey, check this out. I did a good job. I did a good job. Every now and then tell people. I, I'm pretty proud of what I did. Um, but you can tell yourself all the time, this is awesome. I did well. I, I did. This looks good. And that's what I'm saying right now, because this looks good. I'm going to pull that over a little bit. I eyeballed those being centered to each other, and it looks like I did it. Like, it looks like just, no pun intended, I eyeballed them. Um, but they look like they're good. Here, I know that. Yeah, see, I zoom in a little more. That's where I get caught, zooming in. I zoom in, and all of a sudden, I start picking my stuff apart. Okay. Um, and I'm going to do the mouth, and I want the mouth to be the same color, because aliens are supposed to be very kind of simple like that. I'm going to hold down the shift so that it's a straight line. Oh, I made a mistake. I want the line to be... 
Oh, I really made a mistake. No. It's because I have that selected. Duh. Okay, there we go. Now go back to here. Now ah, there we go. Um, just pay attention to what you do. Why is it so small? That makes no sense. Why is it so small? Okay, I'll see when I undo it goes back to there. All right, line, outline, this color. All right, we're gonna make it over here. Why is it that small? An outline of 10 earlier was this, and now a, a 20 is like really small. Can I change this up? Oh, there we go. Ooh, it's a glitch in the program because the minute I tried to make it bigger, it just exploded on me. All right, there we go. Um, <laughs> that is an alien that regrets his flying. Well, I know what I'm gonna do. There we go, I like that. And I'm gonna make it smaller, that 20 is too big. That is a wall, wall looking alien. I like it. Okay. I'm going to give them pupils. Aliens aren't really supposed to, Greys don't really allegedly report it. Greys don't have pupils, but it just looks weird without it. So I'm going to give this alien a pupil like that. No, not like that. be tired. I don't want it to fill the same color. That would just result in nothing. Okay, that's kind of cool. It's okay looking. You know what? I do want to put pupils on because when I shrink it down, it's going to be hard to see. So you want to put some details in there. So, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to grab that, copy that. I like how that looks. Paste. And I'm going to put them No, I don't like that. I want them to have just. Kind of. Mm. <laughs> no, I don't like it. It looks like those are his eyes. The pupils are his actual eyes. And then this is like a lot of like makeup or mascara or something. I don't like that at all. So I'm going to actually cut them out. Yes, I like that. I like that. That's like the alien staring right at you. Cool. All right. Now I'm going to select everything. Oh, you can see all the squiggly lines from my my expert painting job. I'm gonna move it all up. Um. Actually, I'm gonna grab everything. I'm gonna shrink it. Am I able to do that? Shrink it. Yes, I can. Perfect. Cause I gotta have a place for that sweet robe all right there we go okay now i'm gonna draw that robe. now the robe i am gonna freehand i'm gonna do this as a dark you know what no i'm gonna do it as kind of like a light like a lab coat blue almost like that that'll really pop right off that blue of the desert and i'm going to not do 25 that's way too much um make it fill in. we'll start with 15 no still too much we'll go down to 10. um <clears throat> So, getting in there from YouTube, hopefully it's still working. We've got one minute left for tonight. All right, let's draw this robe and we'll head out. All right, so I'm gonna draw the robe nice and flowy, like I said before, like this. And I'm gonna have it come down like this. And have it go like this, and then like this, and then like this. Almost like a ghost. Whoa, that's way too, that is way too far over. Oh no, and I just made it worse. And I just undid everything. Okay, no, 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 no. Come in here, raise to there, there we go. And grab that. Why wouldn't you just get the same color I was just using? Okay. Flow up like this. And then I'm gonna have his arm kind of come up like this. It doesn't look great, but I like it like that. Okay, that's cool, I like that. And then I'm gonna fill it in. Oh, that's right, fill in doesn't work this way. It's time, it's 
time to convert it to a bit map. Dun dun dun. There we go. Alright, I'm gonna convert it back to a vector. See now what it did? It treats it all as one thing. Converting it to a bitmap does that, so not thrilled with that, but what am I gonna do? Alright, and then I'm gonna draw the feet in. I want the fill to be the same color as the alien skin. And so the feet as I drew over here are just like little nubs. So a little nub. I kind of like that. I don't know why that kind of cracks me up. Ah, too far. Let me zoom in a couple. Okay, and then we're gonna see if I can. Can I copy that? Oh, I need to copy. Oh, you know what I need to do? Copy all of it. Oh, took the whole thing? No, 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 no. That and that. Copy, paste. Did it bring it all over? I think it did. And it doesn't. So I'm gonna flip it. the way I thought it would, but it's okay. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move it backwards so that it's behind. There we go. <laughs> I, can, I like that. I don't know why it cracks me up. I'm going to take another one here. And then I'm going to move it over here. It's like a very ominous alien. Like aliens are apparently ominous and scary or whatever, but this guy's just got Good, I like that. I like how that looks. And we'll do one more and paste. Oops, where'd that one go? Rotate it around like that. Over right here, back it up a little bit. Oh, and then I'm gonna send it back. And so what I'm doing when I click backwards is I'm like, it's like layers. It's like the robe, and then it's the first part of the animal, the second part, and the, the face, and all that. Every single one of these point out my screen you can't see every single one of these is considered a layer and so although I guess now because I converted it to a bitmap they're all layers they're all one layer um, anyway point being sends everything back and I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna come over here and I got my alien on my gamepad and or my game board I'm pretty happy with him I'm gonna animate him next week make his feet move make his robe move but for now I'm pretty happy but what I notice is the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this all sort of fit together <clears throat> next week we're gonna code um i noticed that he is obviously way too big so i need to shrink him down a bit in order to um make this work old scratch used to let me click on it and then there was a shrink button and i could just go to shrink it down that may still exist if it does, I've looked all over, I can't find it. So, um, and I'll have to ask the kids at random schools, they technically know the stuff better. I don't like this on him. Then we'll call it his elbow. <laughs> I can fix that later. Um, what you have to do is you have to come in here and you have to change the size down here where it says size. Um, so I'm not thrilled with that. I'm gonna try 20, we'll see what that takes. Oh, that really shrunk him. And then, still too big. So I'm gonna go down to, let's try 10, that might be two. No, okay, that now, here we go. That works for here and I can drag him through and get him through here, but there's no way he's getting through there. So I can either increase that or I can shrink him down. And already I know I need to increase this. This is way, way too small. That's what I'm gonna do first thing next week. But I wanna look at it full screen and see what does it look like if somebody's actually playing it. Yep, my alien's a decent size, not too big. Uh, well, it's too big to get through this part here. Um, but not too big that you you don't feel like you have a, a play field to play in and not too small that you're like, what is that? I can't tell. It's clearly an alien. Clearly not thrilled about his situation. Right over here will be a uh, uh, ship, a triangle when I draw it. Um, so that's kind of what I got left to do is I need to... Um, Next week, I need to code my alien. Oh, I need to fix the game board so he fits. So they definitely have to do that. Code my alien so that as I drag my mouse around, it can move. 
I need to put in the things for it to pick up. I need to put in the enemies and I need to put in the scoring and the time and that's all a bunch of variables. Next week, we're gonna be doing some things that are very, very complicated. Um, but you're gonna be able to do it, I promise you. Next week we do the part where I love doing this with classes and teaching kids coding because it's fun. This all, all today was so much fun, right? We got to draw a ton, we got to come over here, we got to figure things out. Um, and then that's always when we get the kids like, yeah, this is great, this is awesome. And then when we come over here, we're like, okay, now we have to make it so that we say that um, if it's greater than 50 and it's less than 50, then I want you to divide it by and then multiply it. And then that's when the kids go, this is math. You just tricked me into doing math. And it's not really about tricking you into doing math. It's helping you understand that there are a lot of applications for math and if you want to be a game designer, you've got to know math and you've got to be able to communicate and you've got to be able to talk and you've got to be able to work with others and all that. So all these things we teach you in school, it's not just unnecessary. It's not just stuff that we're told or forced to teach you. It's things that we're teaching you because no matter what you do, these are things you're going to have to have some awareness of. So next week when we come back together, we're going to be spending a lot more time on the coding piece. So if you're thinking, I don't need to watch somebody draw for an hour, don't worry. You're not going to watch me draw for an hour next week. Next week, you're going to watch me code and uh, you're going to hopefully see some new things that you haven't been able to do in coding before. And so if you're um, going to be in our competition, hopefully you're watching these videos <clears throat> and you'll be able to learn um, a lot about coding. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to take some of it into the competition. And if you're not going to be with us in the competition and you've just been just curious about coding in general, hopefully you've learned something today. And uh, hopefully next week you'll learn a whole lot more. So clearly this is going to take us a couple weeks to get through. At the beginning tonight, I was thinking, ah, oh, maybe it'll, it'll definitely be two weeks, maybe three. We're not quite sure. We'll figure it out. Clearly, this is going to be um, three weeks. So, uh, and then after that, if we're done, we're done. If not, maybe we'll go on, um, make another game. I tend to get bored with things. So sometimes it's like, oh, this game was fun, but I don't want to make another level. Where's the challenge? I'm just going to make another version of what I just did. That's not challenging. So we might do something else. My favorite game of all time, Animal Crossing, is getting a brand new game on March 20th. So maybe, maybe I'll do a, a game to kind of celebrate that. I've always wanted to make a fishing game because it seems hard to me. Uh, drawing the fish is difficult. The mechanics of it and all that, that's very difficult. So maybe we'll do that at some point. Anyway, if you enjoy this, uh, if you're watching us live, please like and subscribe. That way you know when we're live. Um, if you're watching this recorded, like it and subscribe it so you know when we're live. Um, if you're watching this recorded and you're a kid and you loved it, tell your teacher. Um, you can always email me if you're in our district. You can always email me, C.L. Robertson. Um, it'll pop right up um, at AESD.org. So it's like Anaheim Elementary School District.org. Next week, I'll have my email up and everything. We've turned off chat because we want to stay appropriate for kids. And so in order for us to be um, labeled as appropriate for kids, we have to turn off chat. So I would I would love to be able to do this interacting, but I want to make sure kids under 13 are able to watch this so we turn off chat. That's safety for the kids, safety for everybody. Um, but I will put my email up next time. That way, if you have any suggestions or questions, you can send them to me. And I hope you have a great three-day weekend. I hope you get some time to practice some coding. And when we come back next week, we will do a lot more coding. So have a great weekend. Have a great week. We'll see you next Friday, 4.30 next Friday.